Hello guys, it's me Simu Urahara and in this video we'll talk about some information related to Sinjimaru's Bankai that appeared in the last Bleach exhibition that was in the end of 2023. But before we start guys, don't forget to support the video with your likes to increase its reach so other fans can see it and if you can move your fingers in this cold weather, write a comment and as always, a big big thanks to my supporters either on my channel membership or on patreon i appreciate your support guys it has a great impact on keeping the flow on this channel so first of all guys it can be said that the appearance of Sinji Maru's Bankai is one of Kobo's biggest surprises in the second part. And this is actually one of the things that I like about Kobo. You cannot predict some of his movements. And the good thing is, is that Kobo has begun to increase the number of additions in the anime. In the first part, the additions were few, the most notable of which was the appearance of the original Koji 13, as well as the conversation between Aizen and Yuhabach in the Moken. In the second part, these additions increased, as we saw, like Hiraku's Bankai and the fights of the Bambis, while the important events that increased momentum of the story were Yuhabach's flashback with Ichibi, thousand years ago, which revealed important facts, including Yuhabach's goal and the truth of Bleach words, as well as why Yuhabach fought Yamamoto without the Almighty, and also how the left hand of Ryu became with Yuhabach. And Kobo didn't stop there, but he wanted to correct the Battle of Zero Squad in the Shionite that took place in the manga by giving new fights to the member of Zero Squad, including Sinjimar, who can be considered one of the best members alongside with Ichibi in Nimaya, because she has done a lot of things from the start, from the moment Yuhabach and his guards put their feet in the royal palace, until the last scene of her using the Bankai to defeat the elite guards. And regarding his character, as I said in the beginning of this video, some information was provided about the abilities of her Zanpakuto, as well as her Bankai, so it was said that the needle is a shikai of Sinjimaru and its name is Shigarami and its ability is to create an infinite number of Reishi threats. So I don't know if her Zanpakuto has a sealed state or if it is in a constant release of shikai but whatever the state of her Zanpakuto, her shikai ability remains very strong. We saw several uses of the shikai's ability. For example, it can raise an opponent's clothes so that he cannot move then kill him by stabbing him with several needles inside the victim's body, like what she did with Nianzo. And what is noteworthy here is that since Sinjimaru's Shikai is capable of generating an infinite number of Reishi threats, this explains why she was the one who invented the Shihakusho. There is no doubt that she alone is capable of making hundreds of Shihakusho in a short time. It can even be said that she is the only one, along with Ichibi, that she was promoted based on the ability of her Zanpakuto. Although Ichibi remains a special case because uh, he was previously in the original world, so we don't know whether he had the ability to name things since ancient times. But for Sinjimaru, the matter is clear. The ability of the Shikai is what enabled her to create the Shihakusho, and based on that she was promoted to Zero Squad. But on the other hand, the ability of the Shikai does not stop here. It has the ability to sew shapes identical to the original. The best evidence we have is what she did in front of Yuhabach and his elite guards. With Shikai, she sewed a copy of the entire royal palace as if it was real to the point that none of the guards were able to discover the trap they were in and this enabled her to sew several things quickly such as making copies of herself or objects capable of protecting her from attacks and reverse them as happened with Yuryu's attack. She can even create tissues capable of reshaping parts of the body and healing the person as she did with Nimaya when she repaired the holes caused by Lilibaro's bullets. But since she is a member of Zero Squad, she is obligated to sell her true sword power. Of course, when we talk about the true power of the sword, I mean here the Bankai. The Bankai has several names, including the True Blade. And because releasing the Bankai of all the Zero Squad members is considered a danger to the worlds, an oath was made between Nimaya, Hikofuni, Kirinji, and Sinjimaru that they could not release the Bankai at once. And if one of them wanted to release it, the rest should kill themselves. And this is what they did while fighting the Eight Guards. Nimaya chose Sinjimaru, and Hikofuni said that as long as you have a thousand arms, six people will not be a problem for you. And here lies the power of Sinjimaru's Bankai. It is a wide range Bankai that surrounds several people at the same time. And according to what was stated in the Bleach exhibition, it was said that the Bankai's basic ability is to generate 
an infinite number of Talmon and she can manipulate them. In addition, Sinji Maru has the ability to teleport between every Talmon of the same color. So this is the information that was said about the Banka. Sinji Maru can produce an infinite number of Talmon and also has the ability to teleport between them. Now if you want to explain this matter from my personal point of view, it can be said that the Bankai works in the same way as the Shikai, but to a greater degree. At the Shikai level, the Zanpakuto generate an infinite number of threads of Rishi, so that Sinji Maru uses these threads in many ways, whether in defense or attack. As for the Bankai, here we're talking about a weaving machine that generates an infinite number of Tanmono, and from what we have seen, every Tanmono creates an ability that knocks out the opponent, and here is where the mystery lies. If we did not have the manga, and we haven't the end of the Elite Guards, which occurred in the manga, we would have said that the Bankai, in short, is a weaving machine that produces Tanmono with certain abilities that surround the opponent and seal him. But since what Sinji Maru did to the Elite Guards and Yuryu and Hajveld is similar to what happened to them in their future fights, this matter had led many to believe that the ability of the Bankai has something to do with the future, so that, for example, the Bankai wave the fate of its opponents and thus attacks them with the ability that will defeat them in the future. Of course, this possibility remains possible, as long as there are clear indications of this. All the Shion Reiji were defeated with abilities they were defeated with in the future. But on the other hand, this may be just a move from Kuro and has nothing to do with an ability rated to the future. And the ability of the Bankai is nothing more than surrounding the enemy with those scrolls and sealing them and nothing else. In the end guys, in the beginning of the next part is what will show us the true power of the Bankai and how it really works. We know that the elite guards will somehow manage to get out of the Bankai's ability. But I'm sure that there is a trap, a trap somewhere, made by one of the Quincy's that will turn the table on Sinji Maru. All the hands now are on Yuryu. Maybe he's the one who used some of his ability to make the rest get out of those Talmud or Yuhaba. But what I'm afraid of, or I should say, what would make me laugh is to see everyone turn against Sinji Maru. That's will happen and could happen if Kubo somehow showed that the Bankai is only for the show by making the escape from it so easy. I don't think Kubo would make such move because it's gonna be one of the biggest troll that Kubo has ever made. That's why I think he will not make it. But now we have to wait until the part 3 so we can see what happened. So guys, tell me what you think about the Bankai, about what Kobo said in the last exhibition. Tell me your opinions in the comments and see you guys in my next video.